Hey RPG community, this is Lester Cronish, Strolling Bones, and uh, this will be a video response for Woodward's question, how are you as a player? Um, I really like this question because I like to be a player, although I am pretty much constantly the game master. So I have a little bit of, um, what should we call it, role-playing rust right now, um, a lack of use <laughs> rust. I've recently gotten a chance to play, um, mind you, it's remotely, it's over Skype with a map tool with a guy named Jesse Gitzman Burke, um, and he's fantastic. We are playing Ro Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, the third edition for the Reckless Dice podcast. We're doing uh, live play sessions to kind of give an idea how, how the game is played. Um, and I realize that I haven't played in a long time. I'm rusty on a lot of decisions. I find myself kind of sliding out of character every once in a while, um, tr thinking through the NPC's points of view because of my um, constant experience as the GM. So it's been a breath of fresh air, but I do realize that there are things I need to work on, and that makes me realize that um, as a game master, how appreciative I am of players who work on their characters, who know, know what they want to do, know where they want to try to take the story, but also at the same time respect the GM and his decision making. So um, I like to assist the GM, just like Samwise says. Um, I'm also quite a chaotic player. I like a chaotic bent. But I mean, I'm, I'm turning more away or, or I'm leaning more away from um, Dungeons and Dragons now, which pretty much absorbed my role-playing experience. A lot of role-playing game video games um, and a lot of other... I've played a few other role-playing games, but not too many uh, apart from... War, um, I've played Warhammer, I've played homebrew ones that we've made, and I've played a lot of d and I've also played some of the 40k ones. Uh, Rogue Trader from Fantasy Flight Games and a few other games like that. I've played with a, the 100 percentile dice mechanic, and I like them all, but I tend to, even in the systems that don't have a, a necessary alignment, like a specific alignment mechanic, I still tend to play a chaotic character. Um, I was watching T. Walker's uh, Tanner's video about how he likes to play characters who are kind of shit disturbers and a little bit younger. Uh, they, he tends to want to push the envelope and play really young characters and I tend to agree with him in a way but I like to be just at a believable for 15 strength character in D&D &D parlance I like to play you know just the late teen becoming an adult 16 or, or onward you know um, and that being said I wanted to kind of step away from that um, with this opportunity for the Reckless Dice podcast so I created an older character and an older non-heroic character because I tend to play heroic martial types, magic users, things like that, you know, but that comes from a high fantasy setting. Whereas Warhammer is a mix. Warhammer can be high fantasy, but for the most part revolves around a, a lower fantasy um, kind of setting where everybody's suspicious of everybody else. And I prefer that, um, the setting for sure. But I, I've, I created a character and he's like, he's a 36 year old rat catcher who's lived as long as he has because he's really resilient. He's really, um, he's a jack of all trades. He has a lot of trivial knowledge. He's, he's capable of um, telling a good story, but he's also really good at hiding. So he's never really been too into combat. Um, this character is known about the Skaven who are a giant race of uh, are a race of giant, intelligent rat men that were w warped and mutated by chaos in the Warhammer world. And Lucas Haas's character, or this character, Lucas Haas, he has witnessed, he witnessed his rat catcher mentor get devoured by several of these creatures. And upon telling everybody this, they just kind of didn't believe him and shunned him and eventually ran him out of all these different communities. And he kept running and living at taverns and inns and befriending bards and scoundrels and things like that um so so that being said i tried to step out of character or out of my specific character type the younger more heroic athletic martially gifted and or magically gifted individual to this 
older, kind of disheveled, but clever character. Um, and it's, I find it's a little bit harder to think. I'm a lot older now than when I used to play solidly, but I still find it's hard to think in terms of a 36-year-old from my perspective. Um, and I think that's where the rust is coming in, where I, I used to be able to play in character quite easily, you know, put the voice on and do the whole acting thing. Um, but it's been years since I've played consistently or got a chance to play. And um, like a tabletop RPG, I've played lots of other RPGs, but those don't afford for a real role-playing experience. And I found that that ability has almost completely gone out the window. I don't know what to do. Like I'll plan on other people's turns what my character is going to do in advance. And I'll rationalize why he'll do it. Um, through his skill sets or whatever, the story I've created for the character. And then I'll act it out. And um, I used to do the acting part, but now when it comes, I found when it came to my turn on these Reckless Dice podcasts, I was having a very hard time actually expressing myself in first person. So I've reverted to the whole third person, Lucas Haas says this, Lucas Haas does this. Um, but I still use the filter of using him, I think, first person for him, but I um, express third person, if that makes any sense. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun playing. He's ha He has a few del delusions of grandeur, too. So he has just, he got a sword. He, you know, he's, it's not the first time he's wielded a sword, but he, you know, he weaseled his way into getting a sword and kind of helped defend the party a little bit. And we're in a pickle right now. It's a pretty, pretty interesting situation in the in the story. And you can listen to that on Reckless Dice podcast. Uh, there's it, it ebbs and flows at times. At times the players are really interested. And when they are, it's excellent. And at other times the players aren't interested, and then it's not as good of a listen. But um, that's going to happen with people who aren't gung ho role players who just don't who don't want to do it. Like I'm biting at the bit to, to tell people what I what my character is going to do because I'm so excited to play. Yeah, these other guys that are playing are playing um, more so out of curiosity and they don't really know what to do necessarily and they're not really that gung-ho to do anything. They're not making very rational decisions either. One of them died because he didn't run from a terrifying situation, but that's besides the point. Um, so besides helping the GM um, and playing heroic bent characters um, and younger characters and chaotic characters, um, I tend to to like to be a note taker. I like to take notes. I like to be inquisitive about the location. I'll ask, can you describe the location to me? If I were to run forward, what are some of my obstacles? I like to really try to get the GM to paint a picture by asking him non-specific questions sometimes and really specific questions other times. Um, but always from a game master's point of view, when I'm doing this to the game master, when I'm asking him to describe this, I'm always doing it thinking that it's in his best interest to help. You know, if, if I've re realized that we're in a pickle and let's say the, we only have several options for escape and the GM hasn't really expressed or explained the situation or the location um, accurately or uh, deeply enough so we can't make a rational decision, I'll then prod him, but not in a negative way. I'll ask him something like, so are there any alternate escape routes? Is there, do I see anything that I can climb on? Is there, uh, is there a back way around? Are there loose rocks or sand that I can use to throw in the enemy's face or things along that line to try to get the GM and the other players thinking about, well, what else is possible? What else can we do? So I like to engage the players and the GM. I, try to, I like to try to hold it as a whole, and I like to be attentive. I really, really, really like to listen to what the GM has to say so he's not constantly repeating himself. I hate yawning as, when I'm a player. I feel that it's um, a slight to the GM. I mean, I understand sometimes players get tired and good on them for showing up, but when you're constantly yawning, um, you know, that's bullshit. That's terrible for the GM. It... it it can really affect the way he can present the game when he's constantly worried that, you know, if you are excited or interested or not because you're yawning. I'll excuse myself a lot of the times if I need to yawn, um, go to the bathroom or whatever. I like to not smoke. I have a bad habit of smoking cigarettes every once in a while, and I like to smoke coral as well. But I try my hardest to only imbibe a little bit of smoke 
um, and I'll only go for a cigarette if there are other players willing to come and if we are not part of the action, the immediate action. Um, so I like to be helpful to the GM because I understand his role and the difficulties presented by his role. And I like to try to tell a story. Um, things that I like to improve on as a player are role playing. I'd really like to be able to step past that third person barrier again. I used to be able to do it a lot easier. I took a couple drama classes in high school, so that kind of helped. Um, but I want to get into that stagecraft thing. Definitely, I want to be able to express what my character is saying from a char the character. Um, and I also want to play a wider gamut of characters. That's been my my newest like my newest goal is to play a whole bunch of different types of characters. I'm usually the nature loving ranger or the swashbuckling rogue, who's good in melee combat, but is roguish. Um, I'll probably play a character like that in Warhammer. Um, I'll probably want to play a gambler character, but I really have grown attached to this non-heroic Lucas Haas, and I have a plan for how I want him, sorry about that, to uh, develop, because Warhammer has a cool career system as opposed to class system. So you're actually focusing on character as opposed to, well, this is his class. And uh, I'm not a classist. Um, you know, rich, poor, whatever. As long as you're a good person, you're cool in my in my, uh, in my books. Um, it You know, classifying me as a ranger, I don't like that. I'd prefer to be, well, my character is a hunter. He happens to be a ranger for the Hawkland, um, you know, the Hawkland mercenary group or whatever. Um, I like to, I like to play though, I guess is the basic line. I'm going off on a tangent here. Um, I like to play a lot and being a player is fun to me and I like to help everybody else have a fun time because that's what it's all about, right? Well, thanks for listening to this ramble again. It's nice to hear um, all of you, all of your other guys opinions and uh, points of view and and you, your characteristics as players um, uh, I leave it to the rest of the community to let us know what they're up to thanks a lot bye